Hey guys, Alex Main here, back in the garage again. And today, we're working on a new project. It's actually right behind me, but you can't see it. Uh, it's really small. So, here we go. We got ourselves a new, old 2005 Honda CRF 50. All right, well, I hope you guys all had a happy uh, New Year's and Christmas or whatever else you might celebrate. Uh, hope it was great for you and everyone you were with. Um, I know it was for me. And uh, I just picked this up um, yesterday, which uh, July, July, whew, January 5th. And so got this thing for 400 bucks. The guy said, um, well, first of all, these covers were on it. The guy said, yeah, the Kickstarter's locked up. I think it's something internal with the motor. Uh, I got it home and um, man, it felt like the motor was locked up. So, um, you know, the Kickstarter would absolutely not move. Um, took this off, realized it was all rusty. And as you can see, it, uh, it had some standing water in it at some point. So I kind of figured, I don't know, maybe it's just that the uh, flywheels rusted on or something jammed up in here with mud. Cause you can see it's pretty dirty. And so I started to, um, turn this nut off with an impact wrench, but instead of turning the nut, it actually just sort of like very slowly started freeing this up. And if you listen to it, as we rotate it, there's some rust in there or some particles. So, uh, the impact wrench was able to kind of jostle everything loose. And now the motor, um, spins freely and it's got, you know, normal compression for one of these little fifties. Uh, and that's, that brings us to where we are now. That's all I've done to it. So, um, let's have a look around this thing and kind of see what we're working with. So my plans with this thing, not really sure, honestly, picked it up for 400 bucks. Um, Figured that it'd be kind of a fun project to play with. I already got, you know, a bunch of bikes. I got the, uh, I got two Z50s already back there. Uh, I've had, I don't know, five or more of those over the years. Um, this is actually what I basically learned to work on. When I, when I was 12, my dad got me a Honda Z50R. Uh, actually, the souped up one that's right over there. And he said, if you can get this thing to run, you can ride it. And boy, for a 12 year old boy, that was awesome. Um, <laughs> And it's what taught me, it's what got me started with learning everything I know. So I've been working on these for a long time. Um, don't want to say I know everything about them, but I do know a lot about them. Um, the CRF50 is really just a continuation of the Z50R. So I'm pretty familiar with these. Uh, that being said, I've actually never owned a CRF50 uh, specifically. You know, the body works a little bit different. They have a, uh, a single shock rear end, but a lot of the stuff is very similar to the Z50Rs. The motor is um, identical to the later year Z50Rs. The forks are the same internally, the brakes are the same. Um, a lot of the stuff is the same. So really nothing new here for me. So I've never heard this thing run, but it's got good compression and it's a CDI motor. So I'm really, you know, uh, it doesn't have points ignition, although I've worked on those too. Um, so I really have no doubts that this thing will run. Um, you know, could be proven wrong, but for now I'm not too worried about it. Uh, this thing is, it's not clapped, but it is definitely, uh, worn and in need of some maintenance. So, um, it's fairly stock. Uh, it's got some different tires on it. Uh, the tubes are, the tires are flat. I don't know if the tubes are good, but we'll find out. It's got these monster pegs on it. Um, springs are shot. The holes are all wallowed out and you can see the, uh, set screws that are the, uh, the grippy points that have fallen out. So now these things are just absolutely slick as, as uh, you know, snot. So really not ideal. Um, I'd rather just put the stock foot pegs back on there. Um, foot pegs on this side, same thing. Springs just loosey goosey. Things sagging out like crazy. Like, I mean, really not, not ideal. We're missing the front fender. We're missing the fork guards. Those I can probably find. The handlebars are, let's see, they're a little bit tweaked. If I, you know, you, you kind of eyeball down the wheel, center that up with the frame. You can see the bars are a little tweaked, um, which makes sense. It looks like you got wrecked on the left side because the uh, shift shaft, you can see that's bent backwards. Not a big deal. We can bend all that stuff back if, if uh, you know, without too much trouble. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what we're starting with. Um, don't have the bolts that hold all this stuff on, but I'm sure I have plenty in my stash. Oh, geez, come on. That top bolt is loose. 
really not great because when the bolts aren't tight, uh, the bolt just rattles back and forth in the hole and that'll wear the hole out, kind of oval it out. So uh, we'll have to take care of that. Hopefully it's as simple as just tightening the bolt, um, but we'll see. More things I've noticed are that uh, instead of the muffler hanger go threading into this welded on nut, it uses a an SAE bolt and nut. So that's not up to my standards. Kinda. Swing arm bolt's not tight, so that's cool. And this spring looks like it's homemade from some safety wire, so um, really not wonderful there. Also notice this brake cable here is kind of kinked and, and screwed up, probably from a wreck or something at some point. Don't know if this thing has any gas in it. I did open the cap and sniff it, and it, uh, Smells like gas, but really not stinky. So it hadn't been sitting too long. I don't know how many months it's been since the guy said that he tried to start it and the kickstart didn't move, but um, I don't think it's too terrible. If we gotta clean the carb, no big deal. Um, adjust the valves, change the oil, and clean her up, and I think we got ourselves a little bike. So that leads to the question, what should I do first? I think what I should probably do is get it running with minimal effort, minimal expenditures, make sure that it goes and uh, you know, run it through the gears once up and down the street and then we'll pull it apart. We'll clean everything up. We'll get this thing looking real nice um, and then we'll see if we need to source any parts um, and go from there. I do know that I don't particularly like all these stickers on here. I'm a, I don't wanna say that I, I wanna keep everything stock um, because I have a built to the, absolute moon z50r down here um i don't want to say i don't like stickers because i got freaking stickers all over my ktm but uh at least for this i'm really not interested in building some um screaming pit bike i, I just want to keep it stock and i'm happy that it's still got the stock graphics on the uh the shrouds there so i'm gonna pull off all these extra stickers and um, kind of clean it up Well, it looks like there ain't much to worry about with the spark. Well, I guess the tank is empty. Well, we got some gas there now. We got a little bit on reserve. Well, we got the uh, choke on, we got the gas on. Um, it's hard to tell if this throttle is stuck or not, but uh, ignition is on. And uh, the key is on, so let's see. All right, really no sign of life there. Maybe this gas is just terrible. All right, we'll put some fresh gas in it. Oh, don't worry, I only spilled a lot. Something with spark, it really doesn't sound like it has spark. All right, we'll uh, give this thing a, a shot of the go juice here. Parts falling off over here. I guess the uh, seat bolts. I guess I do have them. All right, well, cool. She runs. We'll just have to get the carb out and see what the inside of that looks like. Well, that's disconnected for some reason, and it has been for a very long time due to the, as you can tell by the the clean mark there. That's like from that. Okay. Not really great because that more or less creates or helps to seal this off. Uh, and there is some modest amount of grit in there. The gasket's missing from underneath this cap. So, not wonderful. All right. 
comes the air box. Okay, we'll uh, pop that open and see what the air filter looks like. Wow, air filter looks absolutely disgusting and disintegrated, which is, oh geez. Oh, and put together wrong. So that's lovely. Yep. And uh, the backfire screen is somewhat clogged up with stuff too. So that's not wonderful. Um, well, yeah, this is, this is uh, in need of replacement. Um, so we'll get a new one of those. All right, so we got the, uh, the other end of this hose off and the uh, last thing to do before disconnecting the carburetor is disconnect the carburetor. Oh, cool, we got mismatched bolts. Okay. All right. All right, carbs out. Woohoo! All right, well there's the carburetor. As you can see, it had a little bit of gas in it, but it doesn't anymore. So let's see what the inside of it looks like. Right, the screws broke free, no problem. Thanks in part to my wonderful GIS screwdriver. All right. All right. Yeah, there's some, can you see that? There's definitely some junk down in there. And if it's down in there, then it's probably also in these little jets. So, let's see what we can do. All right, well, I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to show you. Um, main jet, completely clogged. Ain't no light or gas coming through there. No sorry, Bob. And you know if the main jet is that clogged that the pilot jet is not gonna be any better. All right, so I'm uh, I'm getting ready to take this carburetor uh, apart to clean it. I figured, all right, let's figure out where this uh, air screw, or yeah, the air screw. Is this an air screw or a fuel screw? I forget. Um, I think there's an air screw on these. I'm getting ready to figure out how far it is from seated. I turn it to the right and I'm like, oh, that's not really wanting to go. I turn it to the left. Oh, okay, it's free. Turn it back to the right. Nope, it was fully seated in there. Jeez, this thing will not focus. There it is. All right. So that was fully seated, not really ideal. Um, also quite dirty. <coughs> uh, out comes some dirt, but no spring. <coughs> All right, we'll deal with that later. All right, so we got the carb all cleaned up, outside of it anyway. Um, if the outside looks good, then, you know, it's gotta be good. Uh, this is the heat insulator that goes between the carburetor. Uh, the carburetor's got the O-ring on the front, seals against the back side of this. On the front of this is another O-ring, but as you can see, it's very flat, probably not gonna seal, pretty hard. Um, so I'm gonna ho hoping that, I, so I'm hoping I have another one of those in stock, we'll see. All right, was able to, Steal some parts from my old uh, Honda Z50 boxes. And looking through all my gaskets and different things there. I um, was able to come up with a couple parts here. So we've got a new used O-ring for this, but it's still pliable and, and round, not flat. And then this one, well, it's supposed to be flat. This one here, um, stole that out of this thing, which I modified for unknown reasons, cap, throttle cable cap, um, to put into the throttle cable on this bike. So, should be good to go ahead and put it back together. All these fins in the cylinder and in the head were like completely packed full of sand and dirt. Um, so, I blew all that out as you can see all over the floor. Um, so, uh, with the air compressor and scraping it out with a little pick. So, that's all clean. I did have my thumb over the intake manifold so none of that stuff got into the engine, of course. Um, so, yep, coming along. Um, just moving around, kind of hodgepodge stuff here. Uh, you can see this bolt is apparently too long. The shoulder sticks out past the seating surface there. 
uh, and that caused the nut to jam up on the end of the threads, and now the threads on the nut are screwed up. So uh, it looks to me like maybe the top and the bottom bolts are different. As you can see, the flange here is much thicker metal than what we got up there on the frame. So that's like 16th thick or a little more, and this is like eighth thick. Um, although I don't know if the actual eyelid on the end of the shock is any different. Um, but anyway, um, it does look like the bolts are different because if you look over here, the end of the bolt doesn't actually stick out past the end of the nut. So I'm guessing that the, the nuts and the bolts are switched and due to that, now this bolt is and nut are screwed up. So I'm gonna have to replace those and then put the longer one down here at the bottom. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, so we got the carb bolted back on there. Um, no air filter, because that thing was disgusting. Uh, cleaned out that throttle slide, cleaned out the cap, got the rubber boot back on there properly. With the new O-ring. So um, at this point, we're just gonna, I got the gas tank just kind of sitting on there. I'm gonna put some gas into this puppy and we'll see if it uh, wants to start up and idle and run on its own. Um, got the air screw, we're just gonna turn that one and a half turns out, and uh, the idle screw, we'll mess with that once we get it running. Um, so let's see what happens. All right, the key is on, the ignition is on, um, the choke is on, let's see what happens. Try the old electric start. Hmm. Oh, you know what it might be? The uh, the ground is disconnected up there because <laughs> I took the air filter off. All right, let's uh, let's put that back in. Probably had no spark. Whoops. All right, let's try this again. Sweet! Didn't even smoke. All right, well, we don't have the air filter on there, so it's not gonna run exactly right. Uh, I don't wanna mess with the carb too much because without the air filter on there, it's kind of a waste of time because um, I'll have to redo it with the air filter on there. But um, once she got a little bit warm, she seems to idle. All right. A um, little bit of lope to it. Um, but that's fine. There's also a super duper large gap between the uh, flywheel and the pickup there. Um, so. That's weird, but... Alright guys, well thanks for watching. That's going to wrap it up for this one. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you can uh, see the next video where we'll hopefully get this thing uh, torn apart, cleaned up, and maybe start putting her back together. <laughs>